वेलकम टू स्टोरी बोर्ड आई एम शिवानी घरत मार्क्स इन अ ग्लोबल चीफ स्ट्रेटजी डेटा एंड इनोवेशन ऑफिसर आवर्स क्रिएटिव वॉज विजिटिंग इंडिया दिस वीक आई कॉट अप विद हिम एंड स्पोक टू हिम अबाउट मेनी थिंग्स इंक्लूडिंग हाउ द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एडवर्टाइजर एंड कंज्यूमर चेंज हाउ शुड अ स्ट्रैटेजी गाय गो अबाउट प्लानिंग इन दिस एवर चेंजिंग वर्ल्ड हाउ इज सी एम ओज एम्फोसिस ऑन आर ओ आई एंड डेटा चेंजिंग द वे अ प्लानर गोज अबाउट हिज वर्क एंड इन द इरा ऑफ फैंसी डेजिग्नेशन लाइक क्रिएटिव strategist does it devalue the function of planning he answers listen in mark welcome to cnbc tv 18 thank you welcome thank you i don't get to meet chief strategy officers too often and uh, since i'm meeting you this is like a golden opportunity uh, tell us um, straight off the bat how has the relationship between a consumer and a marketer changed in these times well in one sense it hasn't changed at all um i mean people still love brands Uh, they still want brands in their life. Um, they still need brands to help them, assist them, and to empower them to do new things uh, and to to occupy themselves in new and exciting ways. Um, we see that from our most recent study. People are desperate for brands to sort of play a role in enhancing their quality of life. Um, what we think has changed quite significantly is how brands can connect with both the head and the heart of those consumers. Uh, that journey has become far, far more complicated. Um, more channels. uh more segmentation more fragmentation in terms of the audiences um multiple methods and terms and means so the choices that i think cmos now need to make and brand owners and marketers um is far far more complex i think there is a huge amount of um choice uh, decisions that people need to make now um and we they need more and better advice and better data um so so in some senses it hasn't changed at all but in other senses it's increasingly more complex and i think our role as agencies is to try and help and assist our clients to do the the right things at the right time okay uh, also uh, you know i was going through one of uh, your reports released recently the meaningful brand study uh, and i what i found very interesting was the fact that you know generally globally we've seen how companies and brands are on top of purpose yeah like you know all the advertising that is coming out you know that's winning awards at these big advertising <coughs> festivals has some or the other purpose attached to it but then your report contradicts that it says that consumers really don't care about purpose they know that you know towards the end of the day that company or an organization is there to make money but then if you don't speak about purpose the kind of advertising um, that is only specs driven or product driven sounds a bit shallow in today's world so yeah. what according to you mark is uh, good advertising in today's time well i think um we used to ask very simple questions of brands right we wanted the product to be good we wanted the product to talk about benefits we wanted to talk about how it's changing our lives um i think in recent times uh, businesses have started to use brands to talk about more complex and more nuanced subjects such as social justice such as the, their role in the environment such as sustainability um and whilst all of these are important they're nuanced subjects and i think our study has shown that consumers are starting to uh, disconnect the promises that are being made in those purpose statements and the reality that they're living in their lives today so for example a, a brand um through this study would have said you know we're trying to improve uh, the environment or trying to improve our sustainability um but the consumer is not experiencing that in their in their day-to-day living in their day-to-day lives that is not a lived experience that there is any improvement So this disconnect between the promise and the reality is increasing, okay? So what our study is showing is that consumers are calling that out and saying, you know, you can't say that you're making the world a better place where I'm actually experiencing the the opposite. Mm. What I need you to do is focus your purpose on me. Mm. I need your purpose to be much more personal and much more consumer centric. Mm. So we're starting to see a divergence I would say in the role of purpose within an organization. We think there are two types of purpose. We think there is a business purpose and that business purpose should be about ethical it should be about sustainability about the role of the environment about supply chain about the sorts of um positions it takes in certain social justice issues uh inequality diversity all those sorts of things really significant and important things and that's a business purpose but you're saying that uh, consumers don't care about uh... consumers care that that exists but they don't want it to be advertised to them what they want to be talked to and communicated by is the brand purpose they want their brands to entertain them to bring them joy uh to enhance their lives uh to change their lives some way in some way or shape or form consumers want brands to focus on them now okay 
okay? It's about me. It's so about who, who's, who's doing it well now, if, if I may ask you? Well, we've got Which couple, brand is doing it well? We've got a couple of examples that have won, uh, won big at Cannes. Uh, Adidas, we mm. did some work with Adidas in the Middle East, uh, which was called a swimmable uh, billboard. Yes. Where we really highlighted some of the challenges that are faced by the, um, by the females and the ladies in that audience and how we were going to help them sort of confront some of the sort of, um, mm. I guess, the, the positions that they have in, in society. And we gave them the opportunity to sort of, you know, show off them and empower them uh, through the products that, that Adidas have. have. Um, Reckitt as well. We have a really strong case uh, from Reckitt, which is about how their product actually helps, uh, helps people um, on the spectrum um, to really start to, start to enable them to take their lives forward. So there are lots and lots of cases where purpose is starting to be presented as a personal, um, personal empowerment, a piece of personal empowering, uh, mm -hmm. rather than something that's coming from a business. And I think that's where I think business is starting to think about the, where the focus should be. Okay. Uh, Mark, let's uh, zoom out a little bit and, you know, if you can share with us uh, the role of strategy in today's times and in today's agency setup yeah, and sure. how has it changed? Strategy is a very broad church. Hmm. I mean, um, strategy used to be sitting either in a research function, sort of learning about the customer or sitting next to the creatives and trying to interpret what their findings and trying to inspire them. I think now strategy, strategy sits across both research and insight. It talks about sort of... Um, data-driven analytics, and we look at measurement frameworks, uh, we mm. look at AI and the role of AI in markets now. Uh, we're starting to really try and understand all the different aspects where strategy can actually play a role. Um, we look at upstream sort of headroom analysis. So what we're seeing is strategy broadening its territory and its reach and its remit for clients um, and actually start to really sort of actually tie all of those component parts together. Mm. Uh, when we started our conversation, we talked about complexity. One of the key roles of strategy is to try and simplify that customer journey hmm. and try and really think, in our view, about being more life-shaped so that we can start to sort of bring the right and most appropriate uh, connection points to life hmm. in the most meaningful way possible. Um, so that's a really important part of strategy's job, to try and synthesize all of the information that we find and understand and try and put it in a very simple package for consumers to understand. It was also considered as consumer's voice at the table. Yeah, yeah. So that continues, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, that's where it starts. The essence of, of, of strategy really is always about what is the consumer's perspective on, on a brand. Hmm. Uh, what we also look at is a, the, what we call the meaningful difference. So one of the things that we uniquely look for is the differences between uh, audiences that love your brand and audiences that don't, between hmm. segments that, that engage with you and segments that don't. And what we're trying to find out is why that is happening. Why are the dyna dynamics around specific audiences, or specific segments or specific people and how we can sort of draw conclusions from that. Uh, Amak, how has, uh, you know, <coughs> brands or CMOs focus on ROI in today's time, especially the times that we uh, live in uh, with, uh, you know, economic concerns. Yeah. Uh, how has that focus, uh, you know, changed the way in which you approach strategy? And what is uh, your view on, let's say, short-term ticket to long-term, uh, you know, impact? I think you need to play with both. Hmm. I think uh, long-term investment in brand is, is that there are so many good papers written about the power hmm. of long-term brand investment. But long-term brand investment needs tactical activation. So you hmm. need to be able to give your, the audiences that you're priming the, the ways and means to access your products and services as and when they, they require hmm. them, right? So, so long-term and short-term operate in the, same, in the same sphere, in the same strategy. I think that's, that's probably the most important thing to think about. I think when we talk about CMOs, what they're looking for is both effectiveness and efficiency now. Mm. So, so we're trying to help them understand what are um, and where are the correlations and the, and the attribution from their activities uh, that actually perform down into an ROI. Mm. And those can be both causal mm. as an attribution or correlative. So they could actually be, we, we assume that this is happening because of these specific, specific factors or, data, or this data that we've, we've unlocked. Mm. Those, are, those are key component parts. CMOs are also really trying to understand how to drive greater efficiency and effectiveness through the choices around new channels, and new activities, and new platforms. You know, how do we test and learn on behalf? How do we move um, and innovate on behalf of our CMOs? And that, again, becomes a really critical part of the journey and job that we do uh, for them. Uh, they really need to understand how do they uh, build that choice architecture for their brand owners, and how do we really start to think about what are the right places to play Mm. Um, that becomes more and more important the more choice you get, you have. Mm. Okay? They can't be everywhere. They have a limited budget. So we really need to think 
think and pick the right things for them. Okay. Uh, you know, probably 10 to 12 years or 15 years uh, prior, there was a clear distinction between suits and ponytails and planning <laughs> as a function was somewhere, uh, somewhere in between. between. But today is an era where, you know, you get to hear these uh, fancy new designations uh, like creative strategist. So, okay. uh, do you think, Mark, this devalues the function of planning and strategy in an agency setup? Um, I don't think so. I think uh, I would never deny anyone the opportunity to give themselves a designation that best fits themselves. Um, I think in our head, strategy has a very strong um, remit across a number of different aspects of our business. Um, in some respects, we would talk about data strategy and data analytics. We would potentially talk about research and give people But you focus. do everything. You just mentioned that. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So strategy sort of sits across the entire remit and the yeah. entire gamut. So calling someone, calling out someone as a creative strategist, I think is, is for some agencies, they, they would prefer to do that. I think for ourselves. What does it even mean? I guess it means that they're focused on the creative ways that you, you, you articulate your strategy. But I, I, I would anticipate... But that's what you do. Precisely. So I would say all, all strategy is creative at some level. Um, so I think that's almost a, a hygiene. It's almost a prerequisite of the, of, the, of the classification of strategy. We went through a phase of calling everyone digital this and digital that. But I think, you know, when digital became everything, then it came, you fall back to the, to the sort of, you know, the, the mm. more broad titles that I think are, are, are much more useful to us. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to my question on, you know, brands obsessed and CMOs obsessed with ROI. So everything in this digital world is all about optimization. So yeah. in this era of optimization, <clears throat> Mark, how do you build relevance? So relevance is built through timeliness, through hmm. appropriateness, through pr an appropriate action and appropriate moment. Um, personalization, uh, we've become obsessed with personalization, but relevance is really how do I find that moment to be truthful and authentic in front of hmm. an audience at that particular moment in time? Hmm. And it's a combination of those aspects that make you a relevant, a relevant brand or a relevant product. These, some of these things can be culturally relevant as well. Hmm. Uh, one of the things from our study that I think is very, uh, very um, useful here is that culture seems to be driving brand engagement way faster today than it ever has. Hmm. So the ways that brands sort of reflect what's going on in culture is transmitting now into expectations from audiences. So is this brand reflective of the diversity of its audience? Is it reflecting equality in the most appropriate way? Does it allow me to express myself you know, hmm. in who I am in my truthful self? Hmm. Um, you know, does it have a position that helps me move my life forward in a way that is meaningful to me? You know, does it give me purpose? Uh, these are really, really current trends in culture that are driving society. And we're seeing those being adopted by, uh, by brands and actually driving relevancy. Okay, so, so, a, so a brand can both become really relevant really quickly by, by tapping into what's going on in culture, but can also fall out of relevance as well hmm. by missing those opportunities. So when we talk about relevancy through a sense of personalization, sometimes we can miss the need for it to be culturally relevant and, you know, and contemporaneous in terms of what is happening in the wider world or the society or culture that you're operating in. Mm -hmm. And that culture can be regional, it can be global. So you, can, you have to think uh, when we're helping our clients and our CMOs, what are the right cultural trends, what are the right cultural themes to tap into that mm -hmm. are appropriate for its audience and its brand and, you know, to occupy. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thank you. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Mileng Wong, Senior Vice President Global Brands at Mondelez, who is speaking to us about the key trends shaping their marketing, commerce and media strategies.